The human face is a reflection of an identity, perception, creativity and sexuality and their interrelation, human interest stories. Face is the ability to see, hear or become aware of something through the senses. Face is the way in which something is regarded, understood or interpreted. Each human face carries a different facial beauty and expression, identification mark and a different story. You are welcome to have a glimpse into the world of my portrait paintings where I centralize how the face communicates without speech but in an exclusive language focusing on expressions, disguise and the mysterious art of face reading. As an artist, I visualize that sometimes Portrait is a pure representation of a person, characteristics of a person that most of the times can't be reflected in a photograph. Here I would like to talk specifically about my portrait paintings. As a portrait artist, please allow me to share with you my expertise based on my education and experience in portraiture. In fine art, generally a portrait is a representation of a person in which the face is the main theme. When I do traditional easel type portraits, usually I depict the sitter head and shoulders, half length or full body. I have done several varieties of portraits, including the traditional portrait of an individual, a group portrait or a self portrait. In most cases, the portrait is specially composed in order to portray the character and unique attributes of the subject. Some of my portrait paintings clearly depict the influence of Western arts, great exponents of portraiture, that is old masters of the Renaissance, such as the Florentines. To create a painting where the subject looks real, the skillful manipulation of color, tone and perspective to create the illusion of reality is the prerequisite. This style uses a linear approach to art that emphasizes precise contours and form of the subject. Naturalism or realism requires immense detailing and knowledge of every visible object in the painting. Traditional figure drawing practice is an exercise because skills are needed. To produce a realistic portrait, photorealism or superrealism is a genre of art that began in the late 1960s and early 1970s encompassing painting, drawing and other graphic media in which an artist studies a photograph and then attempts to reproduce the image as realistically as possible in another medium. Photorealist aimed at reclaiming and exalting the value of the image.
it needs the mesmerizing strokes of the brush applied with moderately controlled style in order to produce an adequate result. This instinct comes out naturally that reflects evolved taste for the finest quality of portrait. Visual effects of warm and cool tones is imperative to create chiaroscuro impact that explains the treatment of light and shade in painting. To get the effect of contrasted light and shadow, very fine brush strokes and even soft tonal quality is required. Especially when I am painting a portrait along with drawing perspective, color perspective plays an equally important role, sometimes even more. It is very different from photographic perspective. I believe human brain and eyes can see much more drawing wise and color wise. Though pop art began as a movement in the 1950s, it is today perhaps a cult of cool. It reflects the cool, casual attitude of both the subject and the artist. Through its rendering in highly saturated colors and the emotional detachment from the work, it connects to the vibrant emotions that stoke subliminal feelings. Sometimes I do conceptual portraits, for instance my tidy series that is a kind of self-portrait series like Roman portraiture that was based on practical and political necessity and also a kind of documentation of my momentary feelings. This type of representation of portraitures is a clever device to lend a cue to the subject being painted. In conceptual portraits, the idea or concept is the most important aspect of the painting. When an artist uses a conceptual form and character to depict a face in painting, it means that all of the planning and decisions are made beforehand and the execution is a perfunctionary affair. The idea becomes a machine that makes the art apart from the subject being in the foreground, the background holds importance and reflects deep thought. Lending aesthetics, it transforms an ordinary image into a contextualized background showing a deeper understanding of the subject in focus.
my surrealistic series of portrait is like the most iconic surrealist painting the son of man by reni magrathi in this series of my paintings most of the human face disappears and some other thing like an animal face gets onto human body instead of human face or vice versa here my paintings also carry some kind of philosophical aspect in order to convey relevant and significant messages about the individual everything what generally we see hides another thing we desire to see what is hidden in comparison to what is visible i always say that our brain see differently this interest can take the form of a quite intense feeling a sort of conflict one might say between the visible that is hidden and the visible that is present characteristics is an extremely important aspect in my portrait art since from my childhood when i was 4 uh, to 5 years old very visibly reflect the prevailing style whether in paintings drawings or sketches i used to see lot of old masters works especially in early egypt barak neo classical down to earth realist romantic portraiture impressionist portraits expressionist portraiture from the early 20th century is typically the most garish and colorful of all eras that said in very simple terms one can detect two basic styles or approaches in portrait paintings the grand style in which the subject is depicted in a more idealized or larger than life form and the realistic prosaic style in which the subject is represented in a more down to earth realistic and naturalistic manner my portraits belongs to the latter category that is i prefer realistic manner hope you enjoyed my portrait journey